Origashimasu. Welcome back to the Gojuru Karate Center. So I watched a, a video with uh, Sensei Seth and Jesse Ankamp, the karate nerd, and I was like, okay, cool. They were working with a uh, small guy who does MMA. I think it's Mike, uh, Mad Mike. I like his videos when I watch them. Um, there's no nonsense about it. It's just good old fashioned fighting. Sensei Seth is working on the idea of trying to find his roots and he goes to Jesse Ankamp, who helps him teach, and they start talking about karate is in everything that you do. Everybody's got karate, everybody has it, it's very simple, it's not very complicated, but over the course of the last 200 years, it's kind of become refined to the point where things that would have just been prevent yourself from being hit on the head starts looking like a face block, and we start calling it things like face block. And there's no real translation for that that links uke to the word block. It's just total mis, mistranslations. Um, and so this becomes part of an ongoing dilemma. So my partner, this is totally unrehearsed, so we, 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 we're, we're winging it. And this is not the best side for Brian. Maybe if Brian goes that side, then he's on his strongest side, so he would grab with that hand, and the reason for that grab is not to just like, but it's actually to probably pull me in and to hit me in the face. And you can see it doesn't look like a karate punch. It might even just be he wants to throw a hook or something, a haymaker, and he's trying to bowl it into me. My job is, as that happens, to stop him from hitting me. So first thing that's gonna happen, my friend uh, down in Port Elizabeth always says when somebody says chips, everybody does this. My first job is to stop that blow landing. So as he throws that hand, I'm gonna stop that blow landing and I'm gonna lift this hand up. I'm gonna bring this hand around, pull it up, and now I wanna hit upward. And so this is the first idea that people should have in terms of what would the principles be in this? So one, two, lifting, holding, posturing, elbow, but more importantly, expanding those ribs. And how's that feel, Brian? All right, if his arm was down, I lift his arm up and I hit upward, you could see immediately the effect on his face. So Brian's grabbing on, and he starts to throw that hook again, blocking, grabbing. Instead of hitting now, hitting. So it's third move of the cut-up. So we're standing, minding my own business. He grabs on, he hooks. And as I move in, I'm going to turn my body. Why would we use shikodach? Oh, maybe... We're planning on shoulder barging him or doing something a little bit more. Hey, let's go grab one, two. Why would I use shikodach? I have strength and integrity, but more importantly, typical to a goju person, I want the person on the ground. I want to be able to take the fight onto the ground and beat them up. All right, so I can escape. All right, so typically if you watch Higaona Sensei, you'll see he grabs onto their face. It's like he tries to peel their face off their, their skull. And there is a commonality of this that appears in a lot of Gorgiru practitioners. Um, and that's one of the reasons we do so much finger conditioning, nigirigame, um, striking sand, hitting makiwara, practicing chishi to strengthen our wrists. A whole bunch of good reasons. All right, so I'm standing, I'm minding my own business. Brian grabs on and he punches one. I bring his end down. So I might have been a high punch but I bring it down. That way I stop him from throwing that other hand and as that happens, the kick doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be picture perfect that bang, my foot is at its maximum or near maximum 80% extension. Take a photo, picture perfect, nice for Keon Impon. Kind of impractical because I'm losing all that traveling distance. All right, so I'm minding my business. Brian throws. I'll intercept high, bring down low, one. So one, two, and in the process, I'm just gonna change angle, I've done this. And there's that elbow strike that comes through. 
All right, so I'm minding my business. One, two, three. All right, steal something from Sensei Paul Enfield. Oh, this way again. One, two, three. Push. Ah, ribs. Hit. Then, all right. How do I fit the hurricane in? Brian throws one, he throws a second punch, two. And now I'm on the inside. And we can play with the idea there. And again, it's a short kick. Next question is, do I need to use a driving maigiri, which is extend land, or do I use a rising maigiri? Okay, and the obvious answer is, what do you want to do to that person? And then pick which maigiri you want to use. All right, in my simple way of understanding the difference between the two, and the bad translations we've been given to label things, uh, I might call that driving maigiri a kikobe, a thrust, and I might call this kind of like a kiyagi. I know some people call a rising kick kingeri, all right, or a flicking kick. Um, no, it's just, it's just labels. What do you want to do to this person? He's attacking you. You're minding your business when he grabs on and he punches and he punches again. I'm re-blocking with the same hand. What is his distance? I'm not far enough away to throw that long kick. So it's going to be that upward kick. All right, an immediate effect. Maybe I change what I'm doing. Maybe a get on bribe becomes a kind of guillotine, kind of catch, choke him out while I've got him, I hit him in the ribs. Let's do that one from that side, Brian. You can see what's going on. So we are, same way, grabbing that way. One, two, I re-block, three, four, five, one, two. Instead of that, I do this. He has that gyakuzuki here as a punch, or as a punch while I've got him. What happens after that? Well, there's usually some kind of sweeping, and then we go down to ground. So we're building onto our geeks at itch, playing with the idea, a little bit more pragmatic, a little bit more kind of like common sense. All right, so I'm standing, I'm minding my own business, Brian grabs on, and he throws that hook, and instead of looking for, typically what you find is you end up in this position on an oizuki, on a thrusting, driving hand, same arm, same leg, and you got this, and he went this way, and I went straight in. And this is okay too, because I still have got some kind of ashibarai there. I might not have an arm bar, but I do have the back of his gi, and that uzuk again, and the head, this kind of thing, and if I wanted to build on it and again get to that kind of point that you see Sensei Higaona is doing all the time, or quite frequently, it is, hey, go, one, two, three, four, kind of turn him down, get to this position here, have him on the floor, and then vandalize the poor person, and so we get to the end of the kata, Brian grabs on, he hooks, one, Two, and obviously, for all of our friends who do Muay Thai, yeah, knees, elbows, okay, some dirty fighting. Uh, as a by note, when I was a child growing up, I heard this, I'm going to call it fairy tale story, that in the olden days, the sensei, like uh, Chojo Miyagi sensei, uh, he would take his students and he would teach them maybe Sanjin kata. He would teach uh, maybe one other kata or two other kata to the student. And that would be the total kata they would learn. And from that, they would have to take all the possibilities out of those kata. And so by the time they'd studied those three or four kata, for or two or three kata, in fact, for a lifetime, they truly mastered those kata. And the next thing is that 
a lot of their study and a lot of them reverting back to doing the cutter was as a byproduct of doing partner drills maybe inside the dojo. And here I'm taking a page from something that would be typically since Patrick McCarthy's uh, books, etc., saying the human aptitude for premeditated violence has to happen and karate is a derivative of dealing with the situation and the kata is something that we've taken home. Some people say that the kata existed first and that we've made it fit and we've created a bunkai around it. Whichever way you want to read the equation, whether you read from right to left or left to right on the equation, it doesn't really matter as long as you are making sure that you are doing both kata plus some kind of partner-based combat. If you're just doing kata on its own, then it's just dance. If you do kata and then just bounce around and the sparring is this kind of stuff, um, you're missing the point, especially if you're studying Golgi Ryu. If you are doing just bunkai and the kata is very wishy-washy, then there's also a problem. You need to have a balance in the system. And if you're doing bunkai and you're doing kata, but you never actually engage in some kind of sparring at various speeds, various intensities, various levels, whether you're standing up, whether you're fighting semi-contact, full contact, um, whether you're on the ground fighting, then your system is also, technically speaking, incomplete. You need to have a complete system. And in that system, thanks to our friends up the road at uh, Shotokan at JKA, they have three K system, Kehon Kata Komite. If you're missing one of those, you're missing a vital cog. Obviously, we have a couple of smaller cogs in the Gorgiru world, things that are very important to us, critical to us, things like Hojo Undo, doing Yumbi Undo and Hojo Undo, learning the traditions, the culture, learning the etiquette and the right way to do things in the dojo. All right, to have giri and regi in your dojo where you have a certain amount of loyalty and a certain amount of respect. These things are very, very important. And then humility and modesty. Okay, it's super important. I think in a day and an age where so many people are running around with funny titles and you know what, those things aren't important. What's important is what you do inside the dojo on the floor whether you train with your students or you just stand and scream and shout and get them to do stuff, um, I think it's important to find some degree of balance between those two ends of the spectrum. That is it for today. I hope you had a good uh, like watch of what we're doing. I hope it inspires you to do something interesting in your own dojo and that you go out and explore with your karate. It is truly beautiful. Arigato gozaimasu. Brian, come, let's take a bow. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Cheers.